Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. We'll be right back to the show. But before we do, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Factor Mills. Dot com, where if you go to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50, you can get 50% off your first order. That's factormills.com slash unbroken50. If you're like me and you are a person who is busy trying to create a life, heal, work on their health, wealth, and relationships, and not to mention deal with the day-to-days of normal life, you do not have time to be going to the grocery store and trying to figure out what you're going to cook every single day of the week. In fact, one time I did the math and I realized I was spending over 15 hours a week at the grocery store and cooking. When I added factor, I got to use that time for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my community, and for my business. And so if you're in the place where you need some more support in the kitchen, head to factormills.com slash unbroken50 and use the code unbroken50 to get 50% off. Do you ever feel like life is a never-ending series of lessons while you try to find purpose, meaning, and answers? I am Vanessa Fontana, the host of Figuring Shit Out, a podcast where we undertake self-help, coming of age, and healing. As I live my 20s in New York City figuring shit out myself, I've realized that if you spend your whole life trying to get your act together, you don't have a life. You have an act. On Figuring Shit Out, every Sunday you get to normalize the journey of not knowing and be guided into living your life with more intention and ease. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program. Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? Welcome to the Think Unbroken podcast. I'm your host, Michael Unbroken, and this podcast is about helping trauma survivors let go of the past, overcome their fear, discover their identity, become the hero of their own story, and ultimately to be unbroken. Our goal in company is to bring on guests and experts in the fields of mental, physical, and psychological health to help you overcome the past, to take back your power. And in this podcast, we are unedited and unfiltered, and we're going to give it to you real so that you can start to create massive change in your life. If you're curious about learning more outside the podcast, you can get a free copy of my book, Think Unbroken, at book dot thinkunbroken.com. That's book.thinkunbroken.com where you can get a copy of my number one best-selling book, Think Unbroken, Understanding and Overcoming Childhood Trauma. The most important thing that you can ever do, my friends, is show up for yourself and that's where you are today. And I appreciate you. I have massive gratitude for you. And without further ado, 
Let's get into the show. Do you ever feel entirely disconnected from your body? Like, do you ever have moments where it feels like your brain is like in la-la land and your body is over here and you're like, okay, this doesn't feel like normal. What's going on here? You know, having these dissociative experiences are such a big part of what it is to have suffered through trauma. What's up, Unbroken Nation? Hope that you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. Um, today's episode, I want to talk to you about something that I think about quite frequently, and that's this idea of like being friends with your body. And this idea came because I was on Instagram the other night, just briefly posting something and popped off and something caught my eye and I went back and I looked at it. And it was this photo of, if you know him, David Goggins. And this was a photo of David when he was like 310 pounds. Like he was a pretty big guy at one point. And there was another photo of him just shredded, probably 195 pounds, totally jacked top to bottom. And, you know, it was an interesting juxtaposition to look at because I was thinking about my own journey, thinking about when, when I was 350 pounds and the big difference to be like where I'm at today at like 210, 215 and not having weight be the, the product that I'm seeking or, or wanting, but instead just the way that my physical body feels. And so I wanted to think, I was thinking about this. I was like, okay, how do I break down some of the tools that I've used to get reassociated with my body? And can I give you these tools in a way that may be beneficial with you, for you? I don't think that weight, let me rephrase this. When Dr. Folletti did the ACE survey in the 90s with Kaiser Permanente and the California Center for Disease Control, the baseline of that study actually came because he was noticing that all of the clients that he was treating at the time for weight loss issues were gaining all of the weight back after being triggered. And that actually is kind of the foundational baseline of really all of the research of the ACE survey. Because he was like, oh, wait, this is interesting. There's something happening where people are getting triggered and suddenly their weight is going up. And there was one particular client. I wrote about it in Think Unbroken, so I won't go into the depths of it. But there was one client who just sparked it for me. He said, oh, okay, wait, I think I see something happening here. So I was thinking about this correlation between our physical well-being and our mental well-being. I think that they are both very much intertwined with each other. And I do not believe that you can have one without the other. In fact, I would even dare argue that you have to have a physical health before you can have mental health. And you can go back and forth with that. That's not like a, a line in the sand by any means. And I say this because anytime I've been sick, anytime my body hasn't felt right, anytime I've felt exhausted, tired, lethargic, even sore from working out, right? Even hurt. Maybe I hurt my knee or my back or my shoulder, like whatever that thing is, it always feels much more difficult to do things that require my mental capacity. And then I thought to myself, okay, wait a second. So if when I get hurt because I'm not doing the thing I'm supposed to do, stretching, sleep, massage therapy when needed, then that means that I need to make those things a priority. Now, from a weight perspective, I mean, you can follow and you can track like with, with certainty to an extent that when people are overweight, that they have a higher likely outcome of an early death. I mean, go look at the COVID numbers. I'm not going to go into that, but like, go look at them. People who were obese were more likely to die than everyone else. And when I was at my heaviest at 350, it was because I was so dissociated. So let's talk about this for a moment. Getting reassociated with your brain and your body requires these steps that have been laid out for you and all of us a multitude of times. It requires exercise right? It requires journaling, meditation, physical movement, disconnection from technology, like getting into yoga. Like if you've never done yoga before, I would recommend you go pull up my friend Cole Chance on, on YouTube and go and watch some of her yoga videos. 
just start somewhere, start where you are, right? This is the biggest thing. Like people think that they have to have it all figured out before they can show up. You got to start where you are because where you are today is you're learning and you're learning about who you are and what you have and what you're capable of doing. You don't have all the other information yet to support whether or not you're even doing things right or wrong or whatever. So start where you are, but start. And because here's why, like, in, in yoga, in meditation, in journaling, what you're doing is you're reconnecting your brain to your body. And so very often we want to distract and remove ourselves from our body, especially as trauma survivors, because that's an autonomic response. It, it really is a response that happens the moment you're triggered. Think about behavioral patterns in your life. How do you self-soothe when there is drama, stress, anxiety, right? Is it, it like, if it was me when I was younger, it was food. The first thing I would do when I was stressed out, I was like, oh man, I, I'm eating something. And that was so subconscious to me. I didn't even realize it until I started taking care of my physical body because I would have these moments and I'd be like, I feel sad and angry and depressed. So I'm just going to eat fucking McDonald's. That doesn't really make sense because when you think about what's happening in that moment, you're, you're actually poisoning yourself. I swear to God, McDonald's is going to sue me one day. I know they are, but it is poison. So don't fucking eat it. And, and my thought in those moments was like, but I'm satiating. I deserve this. That's, that's one of the most dangerous words. One of the most dangerous phrases we can use with ourselves when we are doing things that we know take away from our capacity to grow. And so I would always find a re I deserve this beer. I deserve this bag of gummy bears. I deserve this chocolate cake. I deserve whatever this thing over here is. And that was really dangerous because it led me down this path where the deeper I got into quote unquote, I deserve this, the less I took care of my physical body. And then suddenly one day, like my health was so fucking bad. I thought I was going to die. So I'm like, I'm going through this process of, okay, where do you begin? And I'll never forget the, the first time I really, really started taking care of my body. It happened after I went through a meditation. It was just this very simple meditation that I had done in a yoga class. And, and I, the thought hit me, wait a second, I got to take care of my body. And the reason why we are not friends with our body, if you notice the title of this episode, How to Be Friends with Your Body, the reason we're not friends with our body is because it suffered pain. It's been hurt. It's been cut, bruised, burned, stat like the things some of us have been through. Like it's unbelievable, right? And because of that, you have to understand that to get back into this place of kindness, you must treat yourself with kindness. One of my values, right? And and and, and I look at that in the day to day. For me, the way I break it down, I had somebody ask recently, like, what's my morning routine like? It's go to the gym, hit the sauna, stretch, lift, move, just move my physical body because like I'm always sitting here on the, on the mic or I'm coaching or I'm speaking or I'm writing the next book. And so I've got to make sure that I move my body. And then in the evening, I stretch. Now I've had like this weird ebb and flow where like for months and months and months and months, I'll stretch every single day. And then I won't do it for like two or three weeks. It happens all the time. I'm like, I'm trying to be incredibly disciplined about that as I'm in training for different various sporting events right now. And so it's about, can you just show up every day where you are? Because if you're paying attention, which again, will start with that place of, am I journaling? Am I meditating? Am I reading? Am I in pause away from social media, right? It's even as simple as, you know, taking your phone at night and putting in the other room. Like I do not sleep with my phone near me. If you called me in the middle of the night, I have no idea. And in fact, I'm not going to probably find out till 10 o'clock in the morning. That's typically when I'm like checking messages. And so it's the little things that start to build up, but it's, can you be curious about your body where it is, right? Here's what's fucked up. We know what we should and should not do, but subconsciously we convince ourselves that it's okay. Even the detrimental stuff, even the detrimental stuff, right? Like that's, what's so crazy about it. The dangerous things even, right? I mean, I found myself in my, my late teens and early 20s doing drugs with strangers and hooking up with people from the internet that I never met and putting myself in these precarious situations when I was drinking and driving and endangering my friends and my family because, A, it was learned behavior, and, B, I was ignoring 
that voice in my in myself that said, do not do this. This is not safe. This is not who you are. This is not what you're supposed to be doing. And so because of that, what happened was I recognized and I started paying better attention. And then it became, okay, what do I need to understand about my brain, my mind, my body, and this healing process? And, and it really began with one day at a time and thinking to myself, like, I'm my own best friend here. We'll be right back, but I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about the Think Unbroken six-week trauma healing coaching program. If you go to coaching.thinkunbroken.com, that's coaching.thinkunbroken.com, you can sign up for the six-week daily Think Unbroken Trauma Healing Coaching Program. In this program, we're going to go over the six principles of healing trauma, adaptation, understanding the impacts of trauma, how to become the hero of your own story, what to do next, and ultimately what it means to be unbroken. For more information about this six-week coaching program, which you can download as an app on your phone and take with you everywhere, no matter where you are in the world, it's interactive. It's built about giving you practical tools that you can use in real time. And if you're ready for what's next in your life, go to coaching.thinkunbroken.com. Again, that's coaching.thinkunbroken.com. Now let's get back to the show. Because if you're not going to be supportive of your journey, then who is? And it's pushing yourself. Like there is an extent to this in which you have to push the limiting beliefs of the things that you've decided that you deserve out of the equation. You have to decide to take those things away. You have to decide, I'm not going to eat this, or I'm not going to put this alcohol in my body, or I'm not going to smoke that thing, right? The toxicity. One of the, the greatest things that I f- have ever felt physically was just getting toxins out of my system, just feeling clean for a moment. And, and there's been long-term fast. I did a 21-day fast one time. I think that was in 2018, I've done water fast for two or three days at a time. I've gone into saunas every day for weeks at a time or hot yoga. And just it's cleaning the body, getting it, letting it expel all of the poison in it. And I'm not going to go deep into like my routine around that stuff, but it's just something to think about. Like, what do you need to take out to feel better? Right? Is it your posture? Is it how you sit? Is it that you sit all day? Is it that you don't move? You lay in bed all night? Like all these different things because Again, if you can start taking care of your physical body, you will see this incredible uptick in your mental health because your energy is going to shift, right? People are always talking about like this two o'clock crash. This used to be me all the time because for breakfast, I'd fucking eat McDonald's. Again, they're going to sue me. For lunch, I would eat another fast food restaurant. And by two o'clock in the afternoon, I already had a pot of coffee and I was freaking exhausted, And then there would be the donuts, and then I'd go eat gummy bears all the time. And this isn't even just an office environment. This was at home being self-employed, running a business out of my apartment. It was always these little things like, oh, no, no, I deserve to have that right now. The the refined oils, all of those bad things. So if you feel, think about this, like literally take a moment and think about this. If your physical body feels bad, your emotional state is going to be fucking awful. That's just the truth of it. And so what do you have to do to take care of yourself? Many of you know that I've been on this massive health kick, especially this year. I've done anything from every blood work you can take, all the gene sequencing you can do. Uh, I had a a, um, continuous glucose monitor in my arm. I was checking my ketosis levels, just all of these different things day in and day out, just trying to optimize my physical health, knowing Knowing, and this is the most important part, knowing how well I feel, how articulate I am, how how much I'm able to break down all the different functions of what I do at Think Unbroken every single day in a way that was optimized because I felt optimized. That doesn't mean every day, right? One of the big things I'm working through is making sure I get seven hours of sleep. I've always been like the five hour guy and I'm like, okay, seven. 
because that is what science and research point to. I actually feel a lot better. So it's like getting up at the right time, going to bed at the right time, all these little things. And so as you're in this place and you're trying to get more familiar with your body, it starts with these actions of kindness, right? We talk about this before. What kind of person would you be if you're a person who lived life through a scope of kindness for yourself? Because a kind person is going to do whatever it takes to take care of their physical health. A kind person is going to do whatever it takes to take care of their physical health. I know there are things like medical trauma. I've talked about this on the show before. I have it. Trust me, like being covered in scars and multiple trips to the hospital and skin grafts on this finger and broken legs and surgeries and being put under 10 times. Like I get it, but you still like this body. Like if I can have you take one thing away from today, it's, it's understanding that yes, this body that we live in. It has been through pain. It has been through suffering, but it can be fixed. I look at it like a machine, like a car. You know, your car breaks down. You're, you get a flat tire, you, whatever. You go to the mechanic and you fix it. You take care of it. Now, for some of us, that mechanic is going to be, you know, massage therapy or physical therapy or, you know, training for an event and all these different, I mean, there's so many different things that can be the thing that makes your body better, but ultimately it's, you've got to decide to do it. You've got to decide to push yourself into it. You've got to decide to show up every day. And I'm telling you, I know you've heard me say this a million times, but I, I want to hit this point home. If you're not meditating and journaling and getting silence in your day, then you're disconnected automatically. If you're grabbing your phone in the morning, you're already disconnected. So you've got to take a moment and pause and go, wait a second, hang on. What I need to do here is see where I'm at and, and be okay with where you are at. Because think about this. How would you support your friends, your family, if they were in a position like you? You would show up for them. You would help guide them. You would give them the advice that you've come across. You would talk to them about the training plan you've done. You've, you would do all those things for them. But why don't you do it for yourself? And that's the question that you have to ask. What do you have to do today? Who do you need to be? How do you need to show up? And ultimately, the question, you know, I always ask people, what are you willing to do to have the life that you want to have? And I believe that you can be friends with your body. It's not as simple as like this body positivity shit. I'm going to tell you right now, that's fucking never worked for me. Right. And that's something that I know for some people it doesn't work for. For some it does. And that's amazing. And it's such a mindset game. But the only way I've ever felt in tune with my body is when I take care of it. You take care of your cell phone better than you take care of your body. You get a cracked screen. First thing you do, you hit up Apple. Yo, can you guys fix this screen? Right. Your computer breaks down and you call fucking Geek Squad. Your, your Netflix goes out. Holy shit, how fast are you calling that phone number? But you're not doing the things that you need to do for your physical body. And so you have to question that. And look, it's totally reasonable because you're dissociated. Or like me, I, won't, I can't like label you. I don't know you. But if you were like me, I was so dissociated. My brain was so removed from my body. I didn't know which way it was up. And so I was constantly like, all right, I'm just going to try all these different things and see what feels right. I can't tell you how many times in my life I've been injured because I didn't listen to my body because I wasn't paying attention. I'll never forget like five years ago, I was on a softball league and I had, I was doing CrossFit like five times a week and my hamstring was super tight. Like it was the tightest it's ever been. I think we did like a hundred deadlifts. I think it was, might've been the Fran workout. I don't remember. Um, and I'm in this softball game and I'm like, I probably shouldn't run today, but I'm going to stretch a little bit. I'll warm up. It'll be fine. I was still like, ah, I probably shouldn't run today. Like this is my gut. My bot, my literal body is telling me like, don't do this. And so I, I knock this, this ball out into left field. Like it's an easy three base for me. And halfway through the first base, halfway, I've probably taken seven steps. Boom. Tore my calf because it's, you know, your calf and your hamstring are kind of interconnected there. Um, and so had a slight tear in my calf and a slight tear in my hamstring as well because my legs were so freaking tight. My muscles were destroyed. I probably had doms, right? Um, and so I put myself in that position because I wasn't paying attention. And then guess what? Not only did I not get to finish that game, but I had to walk around on freaking crutches for six weeks because of one moment. If I would not have done that thing that my, literally, I remember telling my friend, I was, I was standing there. I was like, I don't think I should run today. 
Like I feel off and I argued with myself. So that kind of comes back to that point. I've told you guys before that what that actually became this really interesting, like added on layer to my physical health and the ways that I don't negotiate with myself. So if my body is hurt, nope, not doing it. So think about this. Ask yourself, like I sometimes will ask my body, literally in the morning, I'll wake up on my way to the gym. I'll ask myself, like, body, what do you want to do today? And there's, a again, we talked about this, the fine line between taking care of yourself and taking it easy on yourself. But I want you to think about what it means to honor the truth of where you are in your physical body today through movement, through action, through yoga, through meditation, through being connected, knowing that we're dissociated as a survival mechanism, knowing that that happens as a, as a response to stimulus in our life thinking and understanding where your triggers come from. One of the best things you could do is literally take a piece of paper and when you get triggered, you you have caught yourself in a behavior that is not one that is bringing you forward in towards your goals in life to simply write down, I got triggered and this has been my response. I did that thing because if you cannot address it, you cannot change it. And there's been times in my life where I've done that, like high stress situations. I'll find myself, I'll give you a perfect example. A couple of weeks ago, had a product launch with one of my other companies, super stressful time. In the past, what would have happened is I would have drank 37 cups of coffee and not slept at all and just been rocked for a few days. And then because of the chaos of it, like, I'll be honest, I did not sleep as much as I wanted to, but I did not drink 37 cups of coffee because I know that spiral. I know where that leads me in the adrenal fatigue. And then one of the big things I did is like, as soon as that launch was over, I said, I am sleeping for 10 hours. I've just laid it out. I said, I'm not getting out of bed. Because again, that's that line. Was I taking care of myself or taking it easy on myself? And my body, I said, what do you need, body? Body was like, I need sleep, motherfucker. Go to bed. And so I slept for like 10 hours right after that. And that's the thing that I want you to think about is honoring that. Honoring that thing that you need. Because again, nobody else is going to honor it for you. I know it's a little bit of a rant today, but I really want to plant the seed. Because when I saw that picture that David posted and I saw... And I was thinking about my photos from when I was morbidly obese versus where I am now. It's insane to me. People will pick up, I'll show people and they'll be like, that's not you. That's crazy. What a transformation. And like, it wasn't a physical transformation. It was a mental and physical transformation. And so you've got to be willing to show up and meet yourself where you are today, knowing that every decision that you make, everything that you put in your body, everything that you think about, the way that you move it, the way that you put fuel into it, the vitamins you take, the whole nine, like that stuff all matters. So my friends, I hope that this episode serves you well. Thank you so much for listening on Broken Nation. It means the world to me. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, tell a friend. And until next time, my friends. Be unbroken. I'll see ya. Unbroken Nation, hope that you just got a tremendous amount of value from today's episode. I want to know what you think. Please do me a favor and review, rate, and share the episode with three friends on social media today. It would mean the world if you did, because ultimately at the end of the day, creating community and connection is how we heal generational trauma in the world. And I need your help to do that Unbroken Nation. So if you're on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you are, please like, comment, share, review. I want to know not only what you like about the show, but how I can make the show better, how I can make this further about helping you on your healing journey. So do me a favor. And when you do shoot me a screenshot of you making the review to my DM at Michael Unbroken on Instagram so that I can have a conversation with you, say hi, and more importantly, so I can share it with the Unbroken Nation. Thank you so much, my friend. Hey, my friends, we will be right back to the show, but I have a question for you. Are you struggling with the impact of childhood trauma? Well, know that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that I'm starting a brand new weekly coaching group that includes a year of live coaching, accountability, support, habit and goal setting, and more. I'm starting a wait list for the group right now, and I'm only taking a handful of people. 
And I'll let you know that through this personalized coaching, we'll work together to help you understand how your childhood trauma has shaped your beliefs, behaviors, emotions, and will help you create a roadmap for healing and growth. Right now, you can schedule an absolutely free coaching session with me and get put on the wait list if you go to thinkunbroken.com. My friends, it's your time to turn your trauma into triumph, breakdowns into breakthroughs, and become the hero of your own story. And I'm here to support you in doing that. Just go to thinkunbroken.com to register for a free coaching call with me and to get put on the wait list for the brand new weekly coaching program.